Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Holy Family Church, and especially those watching us digitally this morning. This week, we celebrate the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We have a couple of uh, announcements, as we normally do before the start of Mass this morning. In October, we extend our Others First program all month long. Please help us stock the outreach pantry by bringing donations to any Sunday Mass in October, and there are drop-off locations by the door, or bring them directly to the outreach program weekdays from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. The Knights of Columbus Loose Change for Life collection begins next week. Bring your coins and donations to Mass and place them in a dedicated collection box so the Knights can continue to support local pro-life charities. We are preparing to welcome back our liturgical ministers, and Father Joe wanted me to emphasize this is a pretty important announcement because there have been a lot of questions uh, coming to the parish office about this. Liturgical ministers beginning in October. Now to resume your ministry or to learn more about becoming a uh, liturgical minister, please contact our volunteer coordinator, Jamie Rodriguez, through the parish office. Again, that's Jamie Rodriguez, the parish office. Please see the Holy Family website or contact the parish office for more information on what's happening in the parish. Holy Family, still complying with state mandates, and at this time, no changes to the current procedures are deemed necessary. And we continue to strongly encourage everyone to wear a mask or a suitable face covering and do your best to maintain social distancing. During communion, as it has been the practice recently, the Eucharist will still be brought to you. At this time, it's highly encouraged that you receive in the hand. However, if your conscience dictates that you are receiving on the tongue, we ask if you're able to kneel by your seat as the Eucharist approaches and raise your chin. Our celebrant for this morning's Mass is Father Joe, assisted by Deacon Denny. Please stand now for the entrance hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, that we might more worthily celebrate these sacred and joyful mysteries, we prepare our hearts. We call to mind those times that we've sinned, and we ask for God's pardon and peace. I confess to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Thank you. Our brother, thank you. Glory to God in the highest.
Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy. Let us pray. Hmm. O oh God, who manifest your almighty power above all in pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasure of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is my way that unfair, or rather are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit inequity and dies, it is because of the inequity that he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed. He shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. me know your ways, teach me your paths, guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. Remember your mercy. Remember your compassion, O Lord, and your mercy for love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. In your mercy for love, remember me. Because of your goodness, O Lord, remember your mercies, O Lord. Good and the bright is the Lord, he shows the way to sinners. Guides the humble in right judgment to the
the humble he teaches his way. Remember your mercies, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking of one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vain glory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards, changed his mind and went. The man came in the man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said to him in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. And even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Usually, uh, when I bring up paper, you're in trouble. Uh, but this time, it's to limit myself. I've, this is the fourth time I've given this homily, and I keep diverging to a point that has... N I, I have no idea what's wrong with my head. But uh, So this is to help focus me. Um, one of the things that will help us make a little more sense of today's gospel is to understand the currency of the day. Uh, and, and to do so, uh, what I need you to think of is this expression a lot of historians use to describe ancient pagan Rome and ancient J Jewish Israel, right, where Jesus was. And it's literally this phrase, uh, honor crazed, okay, honor crazed. What does that mean? Well, in a culture where a vast majority, is truly above 95% of humans, lived by day to day. Namely, you got up, you, you did what you could to get enough money to eat that day, and then you went to bed. Wash, rinse, repeat. The only real currency people had was honor. Their sense 
of honor, an agreed upon rules and a way society functioned. And all of those rules were quite literally geared toward helping the system work as best it could. And a key part of this, and for everyone under 18, allow me to apologize for what's about to happen here. Matt, you did what dad said and there really wasn't another possibility. When Jesus said in this story that a dad went to his son and said, go to the field, and the son said, quote, I will not, his audience, and again, I'm not exaggerating, would have gasped. Because literally the next step in the process would be, and so the father disowned the son, and they held a funeral. They would literally hold a fake funeral, a procession through the streets to let everyone know that to us, that kid is dead. I'm not kidding. There was even a thing they would burn so there would be a foul scent as the casket went through town. I'm not kidding. Isn't that crazy? Now, for those of you, again, under 18, this is worse than, you know, no Nintendo for an hour or whatever we've come up with now, right? It was called an honor-crazed society. The only thing Dad had was his honor. And in a time and place where all you could do was everything possible to eat that day, you followed the rules. Which meant the other son was just as bad. He, by saying yes and then not doing it, he dishonored his father in such a way that the next line should have been, and the father disowned him, and there was a funeral. That's what everyone would have expected. This was true of Roman, pagan Rome, right, where a father had absolute right over his children, literally the power of life and death. And this was true of the Jewish faith in the time of Jesus. If you know, uh, uh, I believe it's Deuteronomy, where Moses said, if there is a son who is disobedient to his father, right, let him be taken, let him, let the elders lay their hands on the son and say, this child is disobedient, and then he will be taken outside the city and killed. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Thank you. I don't, was that you? I appreciate it. That's the context. So now let's dive in. That a son says to his father, no, but then does it. A son says yes and doesn't do it. And Jesus asks them, quote, who did his father's will? Do you know what the right answer is? Neither. Neither, neither and neither. We actually talked about this after the eight. Is it neither and neither? It's either. Thank you. I just came up with that, honestly. I feel pretty good. I right? had some coffee. Neither of them. They were both a disgrace. They were both people who did not deserve to live in the community. But the Pharisees were a little fixed on the answer of, well, the kid who said no but did it. Why? Because that's what religious people do. We say yes, and then maybe we do it, maybe we don't. And that's our challenge today. If you're here, I assume you love God. I assume you want to do what's right. And that's so beautiful. There really is no other reason to be here. If you were bored and came here, I'm going to make it worse. Right? This is not an exciting celebration. It's not about our entertainment. It's about what God is due. Yeah? Yeah? I've been to churches where they try to entertain, and we stink at it. It's awful. Our goal is not to entertain or to occupy our time. It's to worship God, and that's why you're here. So we're all, I think, the yes son so far. We've said yes with our words. Now God wants us to say yes with our lives, to go out and actually work in the field. That's the challenge. And to do so, we need to, in this word it says changed mind, right? That phrase is used twice. Uh, the first son changed his mind, and Jesus says, you and I need to change our minds. 
And it comes from a word that I won't even try to pronounce because it's one of those Greek words with 800 vowels and two consonants, and there's an I. So I'll just say, eh, at the end. That's the word, all right? But here's what, how it's described. Quote, to change what one cares about or is concerned with. That's what we got to do. If we want our yes here to translate to a yes in the vineyard, then we need to change what we care about, what we're concerned with. So let's figure it out. How do I know what I'm concerned with? How do I know what I care about? Well, what gets your time? What trumps all other? What are the things you will sacrifice time and treasure and, and stuff? I don't know. What do you sacrifice for? That tells you what you care about or are concerned with. And I got to say, again, good start. We're here. But now I, I got to do this. Is the faith then last priority the next six days of the week? Well, I would love for my son to learn about God, but there's a ball game. Okay. Then Jesus just got dropped to second. Not base, you know, baseball, I, get it. I just thought of that too. Uh, Jesus just got moved down the priority list. Well, we can't have him miss practice. Sure we can. Sure. Unless we said yes today, eh, but it will change our mind. We change what we care about and what we're concerned with. Everything God's given us has its place. And God gave us baseball. I checked right? It's the greatest thing ever. Uh, but here's the thing. It's to be our servant, not the other way around. Our hobbies, our joys, those things are to serve us, not be our master. We are to serve God and let him be the master. That's what it means to say, yes, I'll go to the field and then actually go out to the field. So that's our challenge today. And I'll tell you, it knocked me around proper. I wish Jesus would have given me an easier word because then it would have been like, no problem, God, I got this. But he got in my face and now I lovingly get in yours. I need to let God change what I care about and what I'm concerned about. What do I sacrifice for? What will I sacrifice for? What's my top priority? If it's not God, I'm so sorry. You deserve a better priest. And it is my promise to you that I'm giving all I got with my broken self, recognizing that, nope, God, I like you, but I don't often enough sacrifice for you. So we're going to sacrifice for him because he's worth it. And because our yes here will give us the strength to say yes there so that God gets first billing and we are people who say yes and do yes. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord. Let's rise and profess our common faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in our Heavenly Father, let's offer our prayers. For the church and all who minister within it, may we imagine and find new ways to lead and inspire others to develop and celebrate our faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For our world, may we be instruments of peace and forgiveness by reconciling enemies and conquering prejudice 
so that we may dis discover the great power of God's love. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are separated from their loved ones and from worship, that we may be brought back together with deeper faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, protect all of those working on our church renovation. Bless the work of their hands and draw them closer to his most sacred heart. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the prayers that we hold deep in our hearts and for those written in the parish book of intercessions, let us pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, especially for all Holy Family parishioners who die in this state, including Florence Sprecher, Ruth Everest, and Eltona Greenwood, and for those who died this past week, especially Elizabeth Crowley, mother of Colleen Palmer, let us pray to the Lord. And for the intentions of Patty Howell and the Welcome Team 24, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Father in heaven, we offer you our prayers and we trust that because you love us, you always give us what we need. We make our prayer of faith in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As you are seated, I just want to uh, take a moment and thank you. Um, as I think I just said last week, but it's one of those things where when the quarantine started and we became unable to take up collections at the usual time, every priest you know died of fright. Uh, and uh, you have been so generous to our family. And I, I do, I thank you with all my heart. And uh, I, I just wanted to be sure you knew that. We are obviously getting your gifts, and we're so very grateful. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Thank you, brother. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. <clears throat> O oh Lord, wash me of my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. And thank you, Jesus, for this holy deacon. Oh, thank you, bro. Please rise and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with angels and archangels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sin, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when he was about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all peoples. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Earl our Bishop and all the bishops in your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. 
bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity and a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you, Jesus. I Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit through your death gave life to the world, free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments. Never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
those joining us digitally this morning, we invite you to recite the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Jesus. Bless God's name, 
Let us pray. May this heavenly, heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Uh, a couple things. Uh, first of all, uh, oh shoot, it left my head already. Um, well, let's do second of all. How's that? Um, this week was the week where um, the priests of the diocese were supposed to go on convocation. Okay, so that's when all the priests gather together and uh, we, we pray and we hear talks and then we hear more talks and then we hear some talks and it's the bishop's way of punishing us for what we do to you in homilies. It's really, uh, but it's uh, always a big time for us not just to pray together but also to kind of problem solve and work together. Well, uh, this year it's canceled because of the virus. And what we're doing is on Thursday of, am I saying this right? Yeah, Thursday of this week, it's a big day. It's all day with the priests and our bishop. And what we're going to hear are the results of a huge data gathering operation that truly started about five years ago, but it's really been going crazy for the last two. And what we're trying to figure out as a diocese is in a sense how to do it, right? That uh, within the next two years, we'll have half the pastors we currently have right now. Uh, that the number of Catholics has never been this high. Despite our best efforts, we're growing. Um, and at the same time, less people are becoming priests. So we're just trying to figure out how, what's the Lord calling us to. And you may have heard of dioceses all over the country. I think Pittsburgh was the first one to really do this, trying to, in a sense, rethink the, even the structure itself as much as we are allowed by our faith. So Thursday is one of those days where they're going to present data to priests and we're all going to argue and be right. And uh, so, just kidding. Yeah, they'll all be wrong. Um, that was funny. Thank you for that. <laughs> No, it's truly, just pray for us, right? It's kind of a big day, and we need to be open to our Lord. Yeah, as priests, we need to be humble, and that's not something we're good at. So uh, pray for us, and pray that we listen to our Lord, and that we learn how to serve him in the days ahead. Uh, Monday through Wednesday, I'm kind of going to pretend convocation happened. We kept it open date-wise, because we assumed I was gone, and I could really use a break. So I'm going to take Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday and just sleep. Uh, so uh, 
I'm embarrassingly excited about that. Um, and I'm going to ask no one to die uh, over the next couple <laughs> days. That'll help. But truly, I'd, I'll come back for any emergency. So um, I really, I know there was another thing. Oh, that's right. Praise God. Thank you. Um, I hope you heard the announcement that we've been really trying to follow all the rules we've got to with the quarantine and all of this. Uh, one thing, we're, we're just, we want to get back to volunteers. I, I know, you know, we're supposed to have a, whatever. Let's, if you're a lector and you want to be a lector again, if you're a Eucharistic minister and you want to be one of those again, an usher, partridge in a pear tree, whatever, let us know. Uh, we're going to start scheduling those ministries again. Now, I assume the government will lift us from that, uh, what, category four or whatever. We need them at five, I think. Uh, but if they, we're still going to do it. We're going to uh, do the liturgical ministers again, I think starting in October. Now, if you want to be one of those, but you haven't been, well, just let us know that too. Uh, contact Jamie Rodriguez at our office. She's the one scheduling this now. And let us know so that we can start scheduling God's people uh, in a more regular way than we're, we've been since this started. I pray to Jesus that made sense. I've given that announcement four times. Okay. <laughs> The Lord be with you. With your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and announce the gospel of the Lord. Pray. Uh, yeah, you know. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.